Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Programming. Kevin here, and in the last episode, we had instructed a rescue craft to boost itself into a higher orbit so that it could rendezvous with a stranded Kerbal in space. But as we have seen at the end, at the tail end of the last episode, there is a bit of an issue, and that is because we are in such a higher orbit, we are moving much faster relative to the target, and now it is up to this craft to do slow trim maneuvers to get us into a successful rendezvous. But as we can see, we are going to have to expend a lot of fuel to bring our apoapsis back down to something that is even slightly close to what our target is. So there we go. We can see that Sitkin's Hulk is 17 kilometers away and getting further and further. We have, I think we started off with about 250 to maybe 300 meters per second that we had to bleed off, which is using a significant amount of fuel, which is a little bit troublesome because we are intending to use this to actually rescue two different crafts. But now you see we have gotten close. We're just killing the remainder of our relative velocity. And the script that we've run says that we're going to kill our relative velocity. Then we're going to fire toward the target. And there we go. It's now pointing toward the target and we're going to fire a slow amount for a brief period of time And then we are going to wait for the closest approach and then we're going to repeat that cycle over and over and over again So let's see now we're moving toward the target at a rate of 12 meters per second Which means that it's going to take quite some time for us to get there and unfortunately our periapsis right now I believe probably brings us into the atmosphere but it's going to take quite a considerable bit, considerable, I should say, bit of waiting to get us around to the point where we are meeting our closest approach. Um, now, because we are in a lower orbit, we are technically moving further away. But based on the fact that altitude-wise we're getting closer, we're still going ahead and waiting until that closest approach. So we can track kind of the distance. We see we're now at 14 kilometers and bringing that down by slower and slower, slower uh, margins. And look at that, we're actually getting signal from the Space Center, which is, I think, a whole quarter of an orbit away from where we intended to begin our rendezvous. So one of the reasons that we have a significant difference in, uh, well, I guess, distance, um, and this is even if uh, we weren't, even if we were kind of able to bleed off our relative velocity immediately on that first approach, is that we were not at necessarily the same altitude. Our periapsis was, I think, 72 uh, kilometers off of the surface where the Zidkin's Hulk was probably not that. And it would have been nice to be able to measure kind of exactly what its altitude would have been at that point. But with the logic that we were doing, um, most of our stuff has been based on the longitude of these various crafts. And the longitude, of course, is relative to the surface of Kerbin. It's not some absolute angle in space. And so if we were to go ahead and just wait and measure, oh, look, there we go. We're approaching the target again. We're doing something, I think, maybe. I think we blood off some velocity and, and approach some more, maybe. <laughs> but yes, this is an excruciatingly long approach. But because the longitude changes, it means that um, as the planet rotates, that longitude is going to be different. So we can't just say, okay, when it is at you know zero degrees, its altitude is such and such, because it would be at a different point because the planet is rotating underneath. So we weren't able to kind of accurately measure that. And we'll have to look at some more advanced techniques for estimating good rendezvous points in the future. But we are doing this as without a tracking station. So that's that's something. And there we go. We're getting closer now. We're at 2,500 meters. And there we go. We're Now it's picking up distance. So we're going to kill our relative velocity again. And as we get closer and we kill these and we match these velocities, it should mean that we end up on approximately the exact same orbit. So we don't have to worry about falling into the atmosphere because our target is not falling into the atmosphere. And there we go. We're approaching again at 12 meters per second. And yes, so it's going to take us still quite some time to get this approach. So we'll jump into some more frustrating time warp to get this underway. Now, I mentioned longitude before and that we can't use that to kind of get an absolute measurement, but that also plays into um, when we were doing our uh, angle calculation, when we were trying to figure out what our orbital period should be to delay our orbit such that we ended up kind of matching. And because we were taking those both at the same time, it was just fine. But it's also important to consider that this only additionally works because we are in roughly equatorial orbits. There we go, canceling velocity, approaching the target, waiting for the nearest approach, doing that over and over and over again. Um, but if you imagine that you were on a polar orbit, well, then your longitude, which is kind of your east-west marker uh, along the surface, is going to remain mostly the same. 
except for the the rotation of the planet underneath you. So as we're trying to figure this stuff out, once we get into orbits that are inclined, we are not going to be able to rely on longitude to give us kind of a quick and dirty measurement. There you see, we're actually starting to get a close approach. We're getting to, are we going to get below a thousand? Get us, come on, get us in there. I think below 2,000, we can actually switch to the stranded Kerbal and, and do our rescue. But, all right, 40, 30. Oh, man. Yeah, this is this was an excruciatingly long recording session, and you're reviewing this in significantly time-sped-up fashion. And there we go, canceling velocity, approaching the target again. We're actually getting fairly close this time, which is nice. All right. And let's see what it's going to do. Cancel in the relative velocity and then end out, right? Come on, be done. All right, it says rendezvous is complete. Fantastic, which means it is time for us to switch over to Sidkin's Hulk, a stranded little uh, crew cabin in space, which we are not going to try and rescue. We're going to let the Kerbal get out and EVA himself over to our rescue aircraft, which is about a kilometer away from us right now. Now, one of the reasons that uh, we kind of chose this mission, or I guess this set of missions to do, is because rendezvousing is one of the more challenging tasks to complete in uh, KSP, and in particular, when we try and actually dock things, which presumably we will eventually want to do once we start creating more and more complex craft, we want to start constructing things in space, that's going to be very, very challenging. But this is kind of a simpler version of that task because we only need to get these things near each other and moving at a relatively similar speed. And we can let the Kerbal do his EVA dance because he's got a bunch of EVA propel propellant, uh, propellant, and we're just bringing that down getting us up there and it's hard to kind of eyeball exactly where we're at but we're 100 meters away and we can see it's finally starting to come into focus and just slow down slow down don't overshoot don't come on come on you're gonna smack up no no <laughs> okay so we passed right over the uh yeah right over there good job good job what is your name is, are you Len no you're sigkin sigkin kerman the uh first gerbil to be stranded and subsequently rescued in space. Uh, no one knows how many Kerbals were stranded and n ignored, never rescued in space because of the lack of an automated space program. Presumably, this is a competing nation who had the brilliant idea to try and do these things using manually piloted crafts, which, as we all know, is a very foolish idea. But there we go. Sid King Kerman has defected and is now part of our crew, and we get some funds from rescuing and we completed a contract by rendezvousing two crafts in orbit and we got a bunch of science from that so that's fantastic and now it's just a question of whether we have enough fuel to get ourselves over to lendos kerman who is significantly further away so now it's time to make our second rendezvous and unfortunately that last one took quite a bit of fuel and I'm a little nervous that if we don't make some modifications that we could run into some trouble um, on this second uh, rendezvous. Either we wouldn't reach the target or we would reach the target with not enough fuel left to deorbit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to change victim to Lendos Debris, which is the other craft that we need to rendezvous with. And other than that, things are mostly the same. The one thing that we have changed is right down here where we're saying change our desired period and we're actually, it's up here, when we're setting our desired period. So in the previous attempt, we said, okay, we want our desired period to be the amount of time that it would take for us to lag enough for the target to catch up. But because it's far away and because we're a little low on fuel, we're actually gonna divide that by three. What I'm gonna say is let's just go ahead and wait three orbits. So we'll boost our orbit only a little bit. And then that'll also mean that by the time we reach, we will not be going so fast that it takes so long for us to you know, finish up our, our uh, trip maneuvers. So we're gonna change the period to the desired period and it's divided by three. And now we're going to say set start time to time seconds. And we'll say first, before we wait until we get to periapsis, let's wait until the current time is greater than what the start time was plus the desired period times 2.5. So we're basically going to say, go ahead and make 2.5 orbits before we do this uh, waiting for the periapsis thing. And this is going to make sure that we complete three orbits before we decide to try and do our trim maneuvers. And then we do the exact same thing as before, though this should be a little bit more efficient because our orbit is a little bit closer to what our targets is when we get down to that rendezvous point. So we'll go ahead and do those things until we get within a thousand meters 
cancel our relative velocity, and then notify that the rendezvous is complete. And with our revised script in hand, we have warped ahead till we get to periapsis. I had to, I ended up cutting out a little bit of the warping just so we don't end up having to sit through a ton of this, but there we go. We are just waiting. There we go. We have hit periapsis and now it is time for us to boost up our orbit. And we're going to boost it up by less this time. And hopefully we're going to keep an eye on the fuel. Not that we can really do anything about it because now that our instructions are running, we are kind of committed. So if we end up running out of fuel, well, then it's going to be up to Sikkin to get out and push. Um, not that he'll be able to rendezvous, but you know. Okay, so we're bringing this up and it looks like, yep, we have cut off. So now we just have to warp around three whole times. Now, because we are in a relatively low orbit, it is going to take us um, a little bit. We can't do much uh, in-game time warp, but I have put this under four times time acceleration in post-editing. But we can see that we are slowly letting this thing catch up. And is this the orbit? Is this one? Or we got one? No, I think we got one more. And the idea is that after three orbits, we should be pretty close and we should be moving it I mean obviously we'll be moving faster but we shouldn't be moving as fast as our first rendezvous which should mean that it takes us a shorter amount of time look at that our target velocity is getting up there it's something like what is that 100 I can't see I gotta readjust my screen there we go okay so 100 and something 104 I don't know I need new glasses okay but that's about a third less than what it was last time, which is much better. It means that we can expend less fuel uh, matching orbits. So let's see, we're just waiting. There's periaps. Come on, do your do your firing. Just gotta wait for this thing to lock its steering. Now, the I did <laughs> briefly pause and go and check our script. And the reason that it is not uh, matching it is that it's actually waiting for our closest approach. And at the moment, we are still getting even closer. And in fact, on this first rendezvous, we came very, very close to this thing. Of course, our speed is a little bit different, but if we had written our script differently, we could have probably killed that relative velocity and said, okay, we're done right now. But of course, that's not the most adaptive solution, and we weren't sure that we were going to end up quite so close. So we've got to wait until we detect that we're moving further away, and then we cancel out the relative velocity, which is a full 100 meters per second or so. We keep an eye on that liquid fuel, and we've got, we're down to uh, less than 20. So it's a little, it's gonna be a little iffy, but now we're gonna lock toward the target and burn toward the target. And this is a much more, at least we can tell, this is much more manageable. We are bringing in ourselves to a 1.5 uh, kilometer, well, from a 1.5 to below uh, one kilometer, which is going to require significantly less fuel. And it's just a question of whether we will end up with enough to deorbit the planet once we have done that. So we've gone ahead and we are approaching the target at 13-ish meters per second um and yes let's okay now i'm hoping that we can do this in the first pass but it may take one of the things that we probably should have done is that our loop only checks after it's done all three steps so it approaches the target and then it waits for the closest and then it kills its relative velocity and does all those three things and then it checks if it's within a thousand kilometers or a thousand meters i should say now, what we could have done is actually done the check at every step of the way and just said, okay, as soon as you're within the range, then go ahead and uh, kill this process and cancel relative velocity and say that we're done. But we did not do that because we are foolish. Now, another thing to note, since I uh, am in the position of having to come up to the with things to talk about as we are doing this approach, um, is that we were using kind of a fixed steering. We were saying, okay, during the approach, set the throttle to 0.1, and for the uh, canceling our relative velocity, we'll just do 0.5. And we're just kind of guesstimating as to, oh, that's a terrible word, guesstimating. Um, we were kind of estimating as to what the best throttle would be so that we don't overshoot but it also doesn't take us forever and that sort of thing this is one of those cases where we could actually use our uh, PID controller that we wrote for our hover script um, a couple of you asked in the comments why are we spending time on a hover script what are we actually going to do with that and that's a fair question um, the answer is that we're probably not going to do much with a hover script for quite some time there we go canceling out a relative velocity um, but the PID controller that we created we can use to manage our throttle in a variety of situations because it doesn't care whether we're trying to, you know, operate against gravity or we're just trying to get to a particular target or whatever. We can feed in what the uh, desired target is and what we're currently at and let it go ahead and optimize. And there we go. Our rendezvous is complete, so it's time to switch over to Lendoskerman, who is in a different command module. 
and uh, we'll be abandoning that and we see that okay rescuer is moving away so you better better get over there buddy because we are not stopping for you even though we tried to nail out our velocity and this is part of because we were you know we had the throttle set to you know 0 0.5 which you know if we are you know when we when we did our initial approach well that was great because we we're moving 300 meters a second faster but you know because we were relatively close we ended up overshooting and uh creating further distance so it's now up to lendos to make up for the difference and get himself over to the rescuer craft and uh, inspired by this i think in future episodes i'm going to have some additional visual mods including the distant object enhancement mod because i get kind of frustrated looking at this little target rather than the actual craft because within 300 meters we really ought to be able to probably see this thing so yes we are making our approach very slowly and we're trying to be a little more cautious than last time so we don't fly past the thing um but hopefully we're getting in there 200 meters come on and it's a question of trying to not overshoot but also not be ridiculously impatient much like uh when we were tuning our hover script which uh yeah we will definitely we will definitely be going back to one of the things that i think is kind of a natural progression is to look at um you know, figuring out how we could perform a powered descent. So, you know, say dropping the thing from an altitude and seeing, well, can you land without exploding? That'll be an interesting, you know, way to kind of put our PID controller through its paces. So there we go. We're finally able to see the craft and we are unfortunately on the wrong side. So it's a question of getting ourselves over to the other side and getting ourselves strapped in and ready for a rendezvous. Now, I... Do am aware that I really didn't take time to point out what we put in this craft. Um, you know, obviously because there's a lot of scripting and a lot of flying, I had to cut out some stuff. But we do have that probe core that's kind of hidden uh, in amongst some solar panels and batteries and stuff. But then we have uh, these two command modules, and it's just a question of getting in. And let's get in. Oh, oh camp board. Fo oh, we get shotgun. Right there we go. All right, yay for Lendo Skirman. And we got some more contracts. Lendo Skirman has now defected and is part of our Kerbinaut team. And we have gotten some money for saving Lendos in orbit. And we do have just barely enough liquid fuel. To let us go ahead and return to the planet. And with our passengers safely aboard, it is time to begin our deorbit. So first, we're going to toggle the lights, which is going to disable our communications because we have no further need of them. And if we leave them deployed, they will get torn off in the atmosphere. We'll lock our steering to retrograde and we'll wait 10 seconds to make sure that we've turned. We'll throttle up and then wait until we are out of liquid fuel and wait another second and stage. And then we'll wait another second and stage to deploy our parachutes. Next thing we're going to do, just to make sure that the heat shield bears the brunt of uh, any atmosphere effect, of the atmospheric effects, we're going to lock the steering to surface retrograde, SRF retrograde. Now, this is important because once we get out of orbital velocity, then we want to make sure that we are pointing directly away from the airstream so that our heat shield is bearing the brunt of stuff. We'll wait until the radar says that we are less than 500 meters off the surface, and then we'll unlock the steering and let the parachutes gently bring us down so no more scripting no more rendezvousing we are committed houston we are coming home it's kerbal houston by the way but unfortunately we have to wait until we have satellite connection to actually upload our new script because man our low curve satellites are not doing great granted we still tend to get more coverage than we would um simply relying on access to the space center but Man, we are going to have to do some tweaking uh, to our satellite network if we hope to uh, get ourselves out. And actually, I think that's something that we will be covering very soon in terms of getting a satellite system that can get us uh, access to, say, the moon or Minmus or perhaps even interplanetary space. Because the OmniSat network, while fantastic, um, has a very limited range, and it's about the range that it's currently at. Once you get beyond that, you really need to start using dish satellites, which have a cone in which they can receive and transmit information. We are just saying goodbye to the Lendos debris, having discarded all of our remaining stages and primed our parachutes, which again have been tweaked up to 0.6 atmospheric pressure to make sure that they don't deploy when we are too high up in the atmosphere and you know subsequently get turned uh, torn off. But there we go. And that is just gorgeous. Actually, I'm not super thrilled with how uh, 
how those colors were. There's definitely some distortion happening in the, uh, the lower edge of that. But yes, and we are. This is actually running under four times time acceleration, but it is very, very slow. But yes, as we make our way lazily down back to the surface and hopefully somewhat near the space center, so that we can get our maximum fund recovery from this mission. Um, I guess I would take this opportunity to ask if there are particular things that you are interested in seeing us do in the next several episodes. It's kind of been an interesting juggle between, uh, you know, not having the the tech to do some things. You know, obviously we don't have strong landing legs, which kind of limits what we're able to do there. Um, you know, it's been also a balance of trying to collect funds, which is part of why we have taken all of these various contracts. And then there's also the balance of figuring out the stuff that we can easily explain and we know how to do. Um, because as we're writing these scripts, I'm trying to make sure that we build on top of things that we've already, uh, you know, talked about and explained so that we're not trying to introduce a ridiculously crazy and heavy topic um, for a single mission. But, you know, it's uh, it's hard to balance all these things. It's very unlike, you know, real space programs where you just do these things without having to worry about it. And there we go. We are getting our reentry heating, but thankfully we're pointed away from the airstream and the parachutes are actually nestled in that uh, little pod there with the uh, with the probe core and the batteries and all of that stuff. So it's just a question of whether uh, whether we will survive. We're getting some camera shake, which uh, I really like from uh, I think they introduced that in KSP one. Uh, 1.0 um, and I think yes we are passing over the space center and into some clouds and it's you have no idea where we're where we are going to be coming down but I think over the next few episodes we are probably going to be trying to land some crafts on other planets we'll probably look at improving our hover script to get uh, you know a power descent working we're also going to have to worry about actually getting satellite coverage so that we can do the things that we want to do and there we go okay so we're going to land in the water and the parachutes are deployed Partially, um, which is great, which means that we will not come crashing. And there we go. And now, <laughs> yes, now KOS is very, very angry because it is trying to point away from our retrograde vector. And so it is fighting valiantly to get us that way. But uh, physics does not necessarily agree. But fortunately, once we hit below 500 meters, we should be okay. But yeah, so we are definitely going to get some satellites. We'll get to some other bodies and then one of the things that i'd really love to do eventually is to be able to get kind of an automated mining rig set up on perhaps minimus and kind of all automate that thing that'd be really cool but that is something that will take quite a few more resources so we're going to have to kind of build up to something like that and then of course there's extra planetary things so lots of stuff to think about and lots of cool things to do but if you have suggestions please feel free to leave them in the comments and there we go we are getting down there we go splash down and I will see you in the next episode. Cheers.